get ready because this is like the magnum opus of puns for me. Hey there! Um, my name is Jessie. If you don't know, I'm a screenwriter and I'm making videos here about screenwriting ideas and stuff. My last video was about me rewriting Attaway General. Um, go check that out if you haven't seen it. And today I have something super fun. Um, I kind of wrote a Great British Bake Off musical. Now, seeing as my birth certificate doesn't read Lin-Manuel Miranda, I did not write a whole ass musical, okay? Um, I just wrote an outline, but you'll be able to get the full picture of what's going on here. Honestly though, like, why am I giving away these, like, bomb ass ideas? If anyone has any, like, connections to the musical theater producer world, do direct them to this video. I would like to get paid for this, thanks. <laughs> So if you're not familiar with The Great British Baking Show, it's basically just a reality TV show in England where 12 amateur bakers come together and they compete for the title of The Greatest British Baker. And it's super fun and very wholesome and I just think the pure aesthetic of it is great musical material. So without further ado, let me talk you through the musical. Okay, so we have a few key players to start with. Our main character is Harry, because I just was going for a British name. <laughs> Our main character is Harry, and he is kind of the technical baker. He doesn't have a lot of creativity. He sticks to mainly like traditional stuff, but he does it perfectly. He wants to win, and that's his goal, and he's going in there like just really focused. Okay, and then we have the love interest, Eliza. Honestly, I'm realizing now that I probably should have made them a gay couple because of all the great gay icons in the Great British Baking Show. I, I must sincerely apologize for my raging heterosexuality. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's kind of a reason though, like I just always want to have as many female characters as possible, but then when I was writing the main character and his main characteristic was arrogance, I was like, well, that's a man. <laughs> so, anyway, so the love interest is Eliza, and she is the style over substance character. She's very creative, she's very passionate, um, but her bakes don't always turn out perfectly because she's busy messing with the aesthetics of it, basically. There's a third baker that I have named. There's 12 bakers in total, but they'll be like extras or you can pare them down or whatever. But I've named a third one, and her name is Ruth and she's like a little klutzy but lovable. And then of course our judges are Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. I went with the OG Mary Berry and not Prue. I'm sorry, Prue. And our hosts are Mel and Sue, and again, sorry, Noel and Sandy. So Mel and Sue are kind of fun. I thought they could be like narrators, kind of like the narrator in Into the Woods, where they talk to the audience about what's going on, but then they can also interact with the bakers and like the characters and I thought that'd be fun. So our story opens up in the tent. Everyone starts arriving and you get kind of that introduction to all of the characters. This is primarily sung by like Mel and Sue because they're introducing all of the bakers but then everyone kind of like gets their moment to shine and this number is called On Your Mark Get Set bake and it's just a fun big number where everyone gets introduced and we kind of get set the rules if you will and then after that the baking begins we have the first weekend or first episode which is usually cake week and harry sings a song called icing on the cake and basically he's singing about how everything would just be icing on the cake and he doesn't need to win. He doesn't need to get Star Baker. He doesn't need to get a handshake from Paul Hollywood. That would just be icing on the cake because he's just happy to be here. And of course, that's a big fat lie. And over the course of the competition, Harry gets a comment that his chocolate cake is dry, literally the worst thing ever. And then Eliza places last in the technical and Ruth ends up winning Star Baker the very first week. 
And then after that's over, everyone leaves the tent and they're kind of milling around while people are doing their confessionals and stuff. And Harry and Eliza meet up and they're talking and Harry's like, mm, I heard you got last place in the technical. Sorry about that. And Eliza's like, yeah, I heard that comment about your dry ass cake. Sorry about that. And they sing their love song, Secret Recipe, which is basically just a song full of like double entendre about like their baking secrets, but also their love secrets. <laughs> I don't really know a lot of baking double entendres, but I'm sure they exist. I mean, if you've watched The British Baking Show, it, it's full of innuendo, so it'll be like that. And then we go into a big fun number called Star Baker, where all of the contestants go out to the pub, which sounds weird in an American accent, and everyone sings about how much it means to them that they're in the competition, and why it means so much to them. And they're all talking about how they are just really excited to make friends and it's really fun to be recognized for their, you know, baking abilities and that no one's really concerned about winning or being the best and Harry's like, wow, I'm the only one that's here to win. So the next song is just like a cute little number. Like we can't have Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry in this musical without giving them their own little duet. So they have a song where basically they are planning out the technical challenges and they're like we gotta make them really fucking hard like these are gonna be the hardest technical challenges that anyone has ever seen in this competition because they do that in every season they're like this is the hardest season ever every single season um i really did think about calling the song holly berry <laughs> um but it's just a pun on their names. It doesn't actually mean anything to the song. Um, I'm thinking the song is kind of like a little priest vibes from Sweeney Todd. Um, so I called it a little meringue. <laughs> so then we travel to Harry's house. It's going to be like during the week when the baking isn't going on and he's in his kitchen practicing and his family is there and he's telling them about this competition and they're like yeah i don't really care because harry's like neglected by his family he has this older brother who's like perfect and does everything right and they just want him to be like his older brother and harry's all like it's not a phase dad this is my passion and harry sings petit four petty fours i don't know how to say it but it's basically those tiny little cakes and it's French for little ovens. The symbolism is that Harry has a lot of like little fires inside of him that are building up. He's building angst with his family. He's building pressure about this competition and it's all going to explode either in a beautiful little pastry or in a horrible mess. It's the next week and it's time to go back to the tent and Harry gets on the train to travel to wherever the tent is, I don't remember, and he runs into Eliza and they're taking the same train, oh my god, and they sing a little song called Prove Your Love. It's a pun because proving is what you do to bread. In America we call it proof. Um, so they're, it's kind of, they're kind of doing a little metaphor thing where it's like their love is growing like yeast in bread. Cute. <laughs> and it's basically just like this, this love takes time. So then we go in to the next competition. It's the next week and we sing a song called Don't Cry Over Ruined Pie. And basically Harry is feeling all of this pent up aggression over his confrontation with his family and he wants to do well so badly that he makes the choice to sabotage another contestant. Sprinkles some salt in their pie, turns their oven off accidentally, I don't know, but he does it and we have that person getting eliminated and Harry's like, this has awakened something in me. <laughs> End of act one. <laughs> Act two begins and we have the song Top Tier where it's basically a montage of all the weeks of competition leading up to the final and Harry continues to sabotage people. He like, you know, accidentally knocks over someone's pastries and he accidentally leaves the fridge open and someone's ice cream melts and like shit like that. And finally, 
we find out that him, Eliza, and Ruth are the three finalists for this season. So then in the week leading up to the finals, Harry decides to visit Eliza at her house and she's in her garden being adorable, sharing her bakes with her elderly neighbor. And this is like further showing that she just loves to bake and she loves to share her bakes with people and she doesn't care about winning. And Harry confesses to her that he's been cheating in the competition. And then they sing a reprise of Prove Your Love. Basically, if we're running with this bread metaphor, when you let the bread rise, you then have to knock the air out of it before you can shape it and then let it rise again and then bake it and then eat it. And Eliza is basically like, this is the moment where you've knocked the air out of our love bread. And she's basically like, this is the moment that matters. Whatever you do next is gonna determine whether or not our love bread rises and bakes properly or, you know, doesn't prove. And then we have another reprise. Guys, Act 2 is pretty much all reprises because we're following up on the themes that we introduced in Act 1. Makes sense. Anyway, we have an icing on the cake reprise where Harry goes home and he has a confrontation with his family and he's explaining to them why he likes to bake. And this time he actually means it when he says, you know, winning is just icing on the cake and I truly do love baking. We love that for him. It's time for the main event. We have the finals. This song is called Showstopper and it's basically just the final competition and Harry makes the decision to sabotage himself. He messes up his cake on purpose so that he won't win and Eliza notices and then everyone goes out to the final party and their families are there and Harry's family is there and they're finally like yo we're proud of you and we accept you. Growth. We love it. So then Paul and Mary and Mel and Sue all come out and they announce the winner is Eliza. Yay! And then you know everyone's cheering and Harry and Eliza have their like romantic kiss moment and then everyone sings the final number which is a reprise of Star Baker and everyone's like we all feel fulfilled by this experience. And that's my Great British Bake Off musical. Um, let me know what you guys thought of that. Did you like it? What songs would you add? What B stories would you add? What character elements would you add? Let me know. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm having a lot of fun making these. Um, and I'll see you next time.